Now, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, um, SSH on Windows as a feature is what we're going to explore today. Now, honestly, the concept of having SSH on Windows has been around for a while with Open SSH, and honestly, I thought that was a great idea that this is now a feature and therefore can be installed without needing to download a zip file, doing a special command and the rest, that we just have a standardized way of doing this installation. And that's where we're going with this video today. Now with that in mind, I did hit a couple of minor little bugs along the way. Now first of all, I wanted to show you this originally on Windows 2019, but when I ran the commands there, it told me that the version wasn't compatible, despite many blog postings claiming that it was. So obviously there's been a patch and they haven't fixed it. Problem number two, if you run this in Windows 10, which is what we're showing at the moment, you need to run it in admin if you have uh, user access control enabled. Otherwise, you will get an error. So let's go ahead and run it under administrator and we'll go from there. So the installation itself, once you're running it as admin, pretty straightforward really. Uh, you simply tell Windows, hey, I want to install this feature. And it goes ahead and does exactly what it says on the label. It installs that feature. Now what really happens is that OpenSSH is installed in the background and shoved into the Windows System32 folder under a new folder called uh, OpenSSH. Makes perfect sense really. Um, nothing spectacular or brilliant about that, just that it's good to know where it is when you need to ever you know, run the commands. So with that in mind, we'll, we'll look at the next steps once that's installed. So immediately after the installation has finished, the first thing you're going to need to do is to basically set the service to run automatically and to start up. So these are simple enough commands. As we're simply telling the service SSHD uh, to start up automatically and to start the service and the same goes for the uh, SSH-Agent service which again we're going to tell it to start up automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and start both of those services. Now for the next part of this, I'm going to make the assumption that the machine we're connecting from is in fact a non-Windows machine for a moment. So I'm going to jump over to my Ubuntu server, or in this case workstation, sorry. And I'm going to go ahead and basically start up an SSH session to my Windows machine in order to configure it remotely. And also prove that the SSH is running normally. Now, as you can see, we've got a session up and running, so we're going to go ahead and just start up PowerShell. And I'm going to go and create the usual folder directory that you would expect to store your SSH keys in. Now, I'm using the environment variable to get the user that I'm logged in as, which, as it would happen, happens to be the same folder we're in. So I go ahead and create the folder for the SSH keys. I then go ahead and create a new item, which in this case happens to be uh, the authorized keys uh, file so that's now a blank file ready to be populated by our SSH key. Now for those of you who haven't worked with SSH before I'm even going to give you the benefit of the doubt because I haven't even bothered to configure the SSH keys here so I'm going to go and hit generate a new SSH key. Now there are various commands that you can use including the uh, copy ID but those tend not to work particularly well with a Windows OS, so in this case I'm just going to use the most old-fashioned approach of copy-paste. So now that we've generated a key, what I'm going to do next is export that key, or in this case quickly read the key. So we're going to go into the SSH directory, we're going to get the public key, and we're just going to show it on screen. So we're going to copy-paste this out, and then we're going to echo it into our authorized keys. So we just close that off and echo out into the key. And then with theory we have the key successfully entered. Now that's operational from this point of view. We now need to effectively uh, configure the permissions. And for this I'm going to use a, a quick PowerShell command in order to set the permissions to only that user and the system. And the reason I set the system is because that's the account that the SSH um, server is running under. So once more we hop over to Windows and this time we're going to have a quick look and check that the permissions that we just altered on the SSH key are A, there, and B, that they are set correctly. 
So as we can see, we just go to permissions here and we see we have system and the user that we're going to log in as. Now, that's relatively straightforward. We're also going to check that the key is there. So if I open it up, there's our nice long key all the way across. So everything that we did on our Ubuntu session is now operational. Now, unfortunately, this is the bit where it really starts to niff me off because the problem here is the last part of the configuration, the bit that would allow me to connect and do so without using the username and password requires me to modify this file. And it's really a very simple one. I just need to tell it don't use passwords. And there's even the comment in the file where it says change this to no. Now, the problem is I can't, not because I don't want to, but simply because somebody, a genius that they were when they created this package, set all the permissions to prevent it. So although you have read, you've got no write. And that's kind of an issue for everything except for the trusted installer. So keeping that in mind, that's why the title of this video is, is it usable? Now, from my point of view, if you want to spend the time with the username and password going back and forth, um, yeah, it's usable, but it's not very secure. And why would you do it if it was not secure? Now, I'm hoping this will be fixed before the final version, and I'm sure to follow up if it's not. Um, and equally, if you do want to use it right now and you don't want to mess around with open SSH and you don't worry too much about the security because you figure they'll fix it later yeah sure go ahead and use it no problem there equally if you do want to use it and you have any kind of production environment uh, go over to open SSH download the files do the installation it's not that complicated it's like three commands plus some configuration afterwards pretty much setting up the keys same as we have in this video and then you're up and running. So is this a usable feature? Yes, I hope it will be, but not today. Now that's it for this video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more content.